Marshall, Ordnance.com, Dylan, Ordnance.com. I guess typically if we're doing a review, we've already done our research and we're going to talk about all the things that the thing does, but we don't even know because they reached out to us to our YouTube channel and uh, asked if they could send us uh, their product here, which is a Creality Falcon A1 Pro laser cutter and engraver, and asked if we would review it. This is pretty quality packaging. Got some nice foam here. Top of the unit, got some protective plastic on the, what looks like it is Lexan or some sort of plastic, not glass. Packaging looks like it's really as it should be, because I'm sure obviously the electronics and servo motors and everything else is going to be delicate if it gets smashed in transit. At least the quality of the manual is nice. Hopefully that will translate over to the translation. It's got pretty good weight to it, which is always a good sign. Here's your LCD readout display. Oh, that that it right attaches there. to the side and it's got a plug in the back. Yeah. yeah, they sent the smoke purifier unit for, I'm sure obviously depending on what you're cutting, the fumes that it puts off. Definitely does not feel cheap. Uh, this is all... Looks like it's cast aluminum. I mean, it has to weigh, what, 45 pounds? Yeah, the shipping weight of the package was 47 for, for the so unit. Something that we've always talked about, buying a, a laser to be able to do projects, data plates, and cutting through thin metal, plastic, certain types of engraving, but uh, we have a CNC water jet machine, but it is massively <laughs> overkill for things that a laser is really designed for. The feel of it is fantastic. I mean, that weight is not always an indicator of quality, but oftentimes it is. And this unit by itself weighs probably two to three pounds. Here's the actual laser. Really? One of them. This is a two watt. Two watt. It's pretty good. Better than I thought it would be. Really? Yeah. Oh. Got some high quality foam. What does that say? Twenty watt. So they sent us a, a secondary two watt, which is probably for a different type of material. Wood. Wood. This would be for metal. 20 watt? Yeah, absolutely. Really? Yes. I mean, that seems pretty serious. Yeah, yes. I know very little about lasers, but with a 20 watt laser, you should absolutely be able to engrave aluminum. Really? Yeah. So, obviously, the way that we're talking, clearly we know nothing about this. This is something they sent to us. So, we're going to learn. 268 by 358 millimeters. So, 14 inches by 10 and a half inches. Is, the, is that the work envelope? That is the work right. envelope. So just that honeycomb panel. I wonder if it's for cutting on. I would imagine so. Does that sit right down in there? Yeah, drops right down. So that's to keep from damaging your bed when cutting out, yeah. Gotcha. Smoke purifier. It is, once again. It's... Came with extra filters. I, I mean, see. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's steel, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah, it could be made of plastic. Fit and finish is very nice. It inputs on the side, the power switches. Got some keys here to be able to lock the head, I guess, for transport, most likely. Did you see the keys in it? Yeah, I yeah, see right, it here. right here. Rotary kit, air inlet. Rotary kit. I think it's designed to also have a rotary head that you can. So a fourth axis that you can. Man, that would be amazing. Exactly. I mean, you know, for like, you know, stuff that's cylindrical that you need to engrave around the outside looks like total power consumption is 180 watts uh 24 volts at 7.5 amps um the unit weighs 16.8 kilos which is about 35 36 pounds and machine size is 567 by 458 by 211 millimeters it feels good and it looks to me like it's one switch yeah, it's got a dovetail here, and it just slides in from the top. And then one plug on the side, and you've switched your head out, which for us, speed of use is very important. It's interesting. This is a this is 2 watt, and that's a 20 watt. Yet this one has more ventilation than that one does. That's interesting. If it works as good as it looks, then I'm excited. All right, we'll get back to you guys when we're actually testing this out and putting it together.
Well, I think that was it. I think that was the setup. That was really easy. All right, so we've got the Falcon A1 Pro. It's all set up. We've got the filtration box all hooked up. The screen is finished. And the machine is calibrated and ready to go. So I'm going to go find some material, and I'm going to design something really quick, and I'm going to test uh, how this machine works. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm using the software for the laser engraver, and I was curious how I would have to essentially find my home or center uh, my design on my material. So what you do is there's a camera setting over here. You select the camera setting. You take a photo. The photo will show you as long as you're calibrated, which it walks you through the process of calibrating and tells you if you're not. It takes a photo of, of the material in there and then you can essentially overlay your design on the material where you want it to engrave. So it's kind of hard to see, but this white line around the exterior is my aluminum, my anodized aluminum, and then obviously my design in the center. So I'm going to engrave this. So I wanted to give a conclusion to this video we've been making about the Falcon, the A1 Pro. So I've used it about 20 hours now. That is not including setup. Setup was pretty fast. I probably did the entire setup, including reading the entire manual to understand how to use it in about two hours. And then the other 15 hours was learning the software and then actually doing some engravings. So we just finished this. This project is the Mark 60 captor mine. It's an encapsulated torpedo. It would have a Mark 46 torpedo inside of it. It would sit at the seabed or uh, very deep in the water. And when it would detect an enemy uh, submarine, it would launch its Mark 46 torpedo. So we got that laser engraver. And when we got that, uh, the first thing I thought of was data plates. Data plates is something we do a lot. We made a data plate for the mine. So we used anodized aluminum and then we laser engraved it with the exact markings that were on the original sticker that was all torn up and falling off. Is, so uh, being 15 hours into using it is I'm happy with it. So on a consumer level, I think it's gonna do more than what you would normally need. I did some steel with it. It engraved the steel very well and very quickly. Uh, the aluminum was a little bit harder, I think because of the reflectivity of the material. I had to play with the settings to figure out what it liked. As far as commercial grade, I don't know if I would call it commercial grade, maybe entry level. It will work for us for commercial purposes, but it's definitely not fast. So to be able to engrave that data plate, I think I did three passes uh, and it took about three and a half hours to get it to that standard, which uh, that might be me using the wrong settings because I did do steel and it did the steel very quickly with a nice deep, probably a 60 to 100 thou depth on the uh, engraving and it did that fast in about 30 minutes so there are probably is some level of uh, incompetence on my part so we'll keep you updated we're going to keep using it uh, we'll put out videos and shorts about it every time it makes something cool for a project all right dylan from ordinance.com signing off everything's a thing <laughs>